I think that's about it. Um, let's get started then. I'll start out. I'll start off by reading um, a poem that I wrote last night. This was based on the sand picture that we had in the poetry packet. I wrote this in an hour and it has a lot of, it's double sided so there's a lot of lines to it. I'm cleaning it up right now, it's not finished. Um, but it's basically about uh, a guy who is looking to give his wife one last wish. She's ready to pass away from cancer and all she wants to do is go to the beach. And he brings basically buckets of sand um, to, and dumps it into the dining room to help her experience that. So that was based on that picture that we did yesterday. So. I never understood doctors when it came to giving advice. If someone's going to die, why do they tell them to eat a balanced, healthy meal, get exercise, and come in for checkups? Why don't they tell them to eat all the ice cream they never tasted? To try a mango while it's in season? To ride a bike in the streets of Rome? To tell strangers that they love them and watch every movie? Dance to every song and read every book that Oprah tells them to read? When they tried to give my wife advice, she only thought of the beach. Remember the beach, she would say? She would go there every day until she was too sick to leave her bed for more than 15 minutes at a time. Like an unwanted guest that is overstayed his welcome, the cancer made itself comfortable in her brain, in her breasts, in her marrow, and in her liver. And when she lost all of her hair and she could barely look at me anymore without her eyelids fluttering like hummingbirds to stay open, all she would say is, remember us on the beach. Of course I do, I would say. The first time I saw her, I didn't dare speak to her. The only opening line I could come up with was, do you like hot dogs? It was the best I could do. Why did she ever come up to talk to me anyway? Did she feel sorry for me or was she tired of me watching her from a distance? It doesn't matter now. She can barely speak anymore, but I know she wants the beach. I go to the basement and take a bucket from when our house flooded. She looked so cute that night, splashing me with water, her jeans rolled up to her knees. She was so cute she could have talked me into anything that night. I took the bucket and made my way to the beach. I reached back, bucket over my head, and drove it in the sand like a lumberjack drives, drives an axe into a tree. I carry the bucket back to the house, open the windows, and let my love pour in one grain at a time. I spend all night carrying that bucket back and forth, stealing sand and hiding it in our dining room. God got me through that night. I asked him to help me again and again. Help me pour the buckets, Lord. I need your strength to help me continue walking, carrying, living. Help me pour the buckets, Lord. Tell me it's not that far. Tell me we're almost there. Tell me it'll all be worth it in the end. Tell me it'll make her live again. Remind me again of how you are in control. Remind me again of how I have to submit. On both knees, head gently placed in concentration to the ground. Remind me again that I have to let her go. Remind me that there's something wonderful after this life, Lord. Help me pour the bucket, Lord. And when we were through, I thanked him and, and raked the sand like a groundskeeper. I splashed a little water on a few buckets of sand so we can make sand castles. The dining room beach was far from perfect, with shattered pieces of shells, forgotten cigarettes, and one crab. But it didn't matter if it wasn't perfect. She was perfect enough for the both of us in that room. When she woke in the morning, I carried her down the stairs and, her, and had her close her eyes. I reached out my hand and removed her slippers. She took one step forward and her toes sunk into the grainy sand. She lifted her feet and let the sand pour from between her toes as if her foot was an hourglass. I held a seashell to her ear and told her to sleep with it next to her tonight so she could hear my love while she slept. I could have built her a castle the size of our house that night and built, and built an impenetrable door. Crocodiles would have surrounded the water in the castle and I would have used our secret passageway to climb up vines and sneak a kiss at night. As I carried her to bed, we left trails of sand on every step of the house. When I returned downstairs, I asked God if we could keep the sand, if we could do this again, and he said, someday. I need her now, he said, but one day I'll let her come back, and she will have a bucket, and together you will take the sand back to the beach, bucket by bucket, loving grain by loving grain, and you will walk barefoot again, and you will ask if she likes hot dogs again. And she would say, remember the time you brought me the beach? And you would say, of course I do. Right, good taste to finish that. Ah, it's you. I had been hoping I would not see you again. You texts during class and then complains when you fail on the test. You who talks about sex as if we weren't simply procreating and it wasn't the most emotional thing you've ever gone through. Because if it was the former, you wouldn't talk about it. If it was the latter, you would keep it to yourself. You, the Twilight fans. You, the Cyrus Stalkers. You, the Bieber Ballas. And you, the Jonas Wompies. You, who led this great nation into the gutters by not caring what the banks did with their money. Just like a parent who didn't care that their child was 
buying drugs so long as you could get some too. You who insults other beliefs but doesn't expect other people to do the same to yours. You who followed your friend by smacking me but was surprised when I kicked you in the knee. <laughs> you who compared me to the ugliest man on the planet. You who confuses pain and pleasure. You who call other girls bitches but you are too mad. And they're like, crap. <laughs> you who are too blinded by your beauty products to realize that you are one too. You who say, this dick. You who say, God has saved me. I am free. But you do not understand that you are instead condemned by God to live with people like you, who, read, who write down random shit, call it art, and then submit it as rap. I scream out against the world, yet I only hear echoes as it bounces off the walls of conformity that you helped build. You! I fought in your general direction! Ha! <laughs> All right. Go for it. Finish chewing first. Yeah. Still chewing the bagel. Took it two seconds. They gotta sit down too. All right, we're all good. That was more than seconds. Hang the politicians and elect the bomb. Hang the summer blockbusters and anesthetize their fun. Hang the fools on MTV. Hang them all. They don't speak to me. <laughs> Hang the beaters with the colored rope. Hang the warheads that give us hope. Hang the rich man that says no. Hang the commercials on the radio. Hang the racists and the KKK. Hang the fags who hate the gays. Hang the man who says I can't. Hang the love that you never lend. Hang the stereotypes and bigots all. Hang the minds that built the wall. Hang the bullets that make soldiers bleed. Hang the deaths that make mothers that steal mothers sleep. Hang the stars without originality. Hang the death of creativity. Hang the tears that children try, and hang the dreams that never fly. Hang the world with acquiesce. Hang on tight, then pray for the best. My conclusions always suck, because goodbye is the hardest note to hit. <clears throat> the highest sopranos. And the lowest basses. Still to strive to hit that note. Little do they know. Little do they know. I have a little disclaimer for everybody before we start. Oh, there you go. Can you... <laughs> will you all just please excuse our lack of musical quality today? Because we ourselves have excused our lack of preparation. So, let's, let's begin. I'm Jeff Duff, but I'm not the important one here. This is Israel. Alright. They don't need to see me. That's Sam Wayne's girlfriend, this is... Oh, this is Nick. <laughs> oh, you're Paul Curtis. Oh, Paul Curtis. What? <laughs> Anyways, let's step Pops. 
So why do you live this life so completely filled with strife? Sex is coursing through the streets. What? Deviancy knocks at every door. Better lock it. Better lock that door. Don't want your child to become a whore. <laughs> Chaos floods the cities. Abomination parade. Ticker tape to celebrate their own wicked existence. Bar off the door. Do not let them get through. You're safe here with your television. Uh, and followed by the despicable ones. Something worse yet. Crack smoking pedophiles. Hey, I recognize more than two or three of them. Oh Lord, not just your average Joe no more. All that house is containing all the people once thought so normal, so innocent, and yet to culminate in a consensus such as this. Where are my neighbors, my friendly lawnmowers, and the straight couples I invite to dinner? And what are the children? Now I see they are running naked in the streets with nothing to hide but themselves. I see my own daughter held up by five nude Greeks. I rush to the TV and smash to bits every piece of skin I see. Oh no, what about me? What about me? Silly man, won't your wife suffice for tickling your fancy? Now that I think of it, no, no. I rush to the computer and save every bit of skin I see, and then back to the window I flee. My son, surrounded by women, how proud I am of he. And then, where am I? Have I gone mad? I stick out my tongue and on it falls a piece of ticker tape. I never even knew what that was until this day. I look left, right, above and beyond, and I see. I'm, sitting, I'm comfortably sitting on a throne atop the highest and grandest float in the magnis magnificent and grand parade. Oh, this is another silly poem. Green screen! There's green writing on the screen. This is the weirdest thing that I've ever seen. Green is for money and sick cats, not for strange computer screens on Macs. Green is for Christmas trees and traffic lights. These neon green words just hurt my eyes. I wonder why the color green exists. Why have color at all? I wonder this. I mean, without the color green, there wouldn't be any trees. I guess that's important because it's hard to breathe. Green means go in America, but that doesn't really mean very much. No, I will not eat green ha I will not eat the green screen, Sam. I am. It's a good computer screen. I don't think I can. But if I could, it probably would not taste very good. In fact, it probably wouldn't taste anything at all like food. It might have a very foul taste that leaves me stricken. Or it could end up tasting just like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this is my story of a cook. <laughs> now here's the story of a girl with a dream, a dream to be a culinary cooking whiz, a dream she could easily accomplish or show it all, or so it would seem. She was great with customers, yes, good old Tiffany was good, but when it came to her managers, she gave some attitude. Yes, she would. Not only did she have a hot head, Tip's grade were down in the dumps, and no culinary school would accept a student that slumps. Now, what, should, what would she do? She had all these problems. Maybe she'd be better off living in the woods with possums. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is he in the camera? Right. Right. I don't know how good it's going to be because I'm going to freestyle it, so it's probably going to be that good at all. Woohoo! I would just like to preface that this is going to suck everybody, so. <laughs> you never want to do that when you get on stage. You never want to say this is going to suck. This no, suck. don't say anything. Oh, for it, Blake. You're Blake. 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 Walking down the street, and I see you looking at me. Are you lost at my beauty? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I start running away, and you start to say, Hey, hey, hey. 
Like a half hour. <laughs> I say, leave me alone. You say, no. I start running faster and faster, trying to get away, but there's nothing I can do or say. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Cause I was going the wrong way. My home was down the street. I was hungry for meat. <laughs> so I went to the butcher. <laughs> I said, Butcher, let me get some of your meat. <laughs> he said, No. <laughs> So I walked right out the door. I went to the bakery, asked for some cake. Some strawberry cake with some whipped cream on top. He said, no. So I stopped. I looked at him in the eye and I said, give me some of your cake. <laughs> and then I took the cake from him and put him in his, put in his face. Like he was a disgrace. <laughs> then I ran, because the cops were after me. <laughs> I ran home to my mommy. My pops hit me my behind. Because I was bad. <laughs> and I was bad at the same time. <laughs> and I started to fly away. <laughs> Because I was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Up in my room, all alone. Nobody knew what I was doing. <laughs> but I knew what I was doing. <laughs> then my mom came in the room and saw me. <laughs> and I was dead as dead could be. And this was from the card, right? Yeah. Okay. From the success card. A hot moan pierces the nothingness, soon becoming everything. <laughs> everything all around me, on top of me, below me. Sweaty hands gripping breasts, soon becoming legs, soon becoming waist. In the dark, her figure makes no sense to me. It doesn't, assu it doesn't assume the positions I'm used to. I fear I am being swallowed up by the jungle. I enter her, and somehow she is entering me. Not welcoming me, nay, more thrusting me into a mad universe of skull-crushing silence. <laughs> Relative silence, of course, for the creatures are stirring all through the forest. House. Her cool touch sets fire to my desire, whispering smoky passion into my soul. Her breath spreads over me like a warm blanket. Suddenly I am cozy and the draw is drawing near. The animal is gone, replaced by two humans, doing their best to make love. Love that does not stop at the summit of the mountain, but keeps going on through the remaining sky and into the heavens. <laughs> I do not love this girl, nay, but I love that we have so living, lovingly made. Here is the denouement, and what have I learned? As she lies beside me, I wonder. Never before have I had such pleasure. pleasure. Of course, it is not merely a physical desire that moves me so. The love is so satisfying, so an energetic a love I have never felt. Yet if it is not love, what is it? And in the morning, what do I see? Her toenails have left marks on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh.